Hello everyone, another edition, 11 Live. It's Tuesday night, I'm Ian Gilmore, so here we go, 11 Live. Uh, our guest tonight is Juan Tejada. He is one of the returning members of the Indy 11, joined us uh, midway through the season last year, uh, so we're excited to talk to him. We never really got a chance to sit down and get to know Juan Tejada, so hopefully we'll get to do that a bit more tonight. Uh, before we get going with him, want to just give a shout out real quick to uh, Matt Lockwood. Uh, he was at Open Tryouts this weekend. Uh, earned an invite from head coach Mark Lowry to join us in preseason, uh, which starts officially on February 1st. Uh, I think some players are getting together to do some small group training uh, this week. Uh, probably not tomorrow because of the snow, but hopefully later this week they'll get going. Uh, and then next week we get going officially. February 1, preseason for Indy 11 uh, gets going and gets underway. Uh, so once we get uh, Juan Tejada on here tonight, we'll get going with that. Um, and we go, the one thing that I'm really excited to talk to Juan about is obviously he played three and a half years with the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Uh, you know who else played for the Tampa Bay Rowdies? Sebastian Guenzotti. Those two teammates are linking up once again. Uh, so we'll get the, the news from Juan on how that is going to be him playing uh, with, his, with, his, with his old mate, his old strike partner, uh, once again. So we'll get him. Everyone else do it. Send him questions. Send in how you're feeling. It's a good Tuesday. We're almost to the end of January already. It feels like we just turned the new year, and here we go. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Juan. How are you, man? Good to see you. Ian. If, this time, it's not the grocery good store. Good to see you as well. For those who don't know, the last two times I've seen Juan, she's been at the local Kroger. So uh, we're, we're in the friendly confines of our own homes tonight. Where, where are you at? Are you, are you back home in Indy? You ready to get I going? Yeah. I'm uh, here in starts Carmen. next week. I'm assuming you're a bit excited after all this traveling you've done the off season to get back to work. Yeah, I mean it feels so long the off season. So does it, does it feel like I just want to get forever going? You know, and also kind of flew by, or does it really just feel like it's been long for you? Well, yeah, I mean you're right, both. But uh, for me, I just want to get going and training. So for me, it felt like a long time, you know. Uh, since November, so hopefully it's later. Just on want to get going when the off season comes around this year. Uh, you've been a busy man this off season, uh, and like Tim Trilk last week, he got engaged this off season. You did the one bigger and got married. What was that like, man? That was amazing. Uh, I've been with her seven years almost. So uh, just to you know be married now and have my family, her family there, have a big party in where, where we called home, St. Pete. Uh, it was great and we had a great time. I'm sure the weather was better. We'll never forget it. it. Someone last yeah. week said they wanted Tim's yeah. <laughs> wedding to be uh, at the mic and his wedding's gonna be in January next year. <laughs> like that, that might not work out. It, it's definitely not gonna work out temperature wise and snow wise, it might not be, not by, might not be great either. Has life for you felt any different as a married man, or does it kind of feel the same? Just a just a, a little tweak here. It feels the same. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we've been together for a long time. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, nothing really changed from that day. But um, I mean, it's great responsibility to be married. So now I have to make sure. Yeah. I treat yeah, her do. well. Uh, you know? <laughs> and you've been doing a bunch of traveling this off season too. Where where have you been? Kind of tell me some some of the places you've been and what you've been doing. Well, um, well, I went back to Tampa, St. Pete. Uh, like you said, got married and stuff. And I love hiking. So when we were coming back here, we stopped by in Tennessee and and had some good good hikings and saw some waterfalls and stuff like that. So it was a great time. I, I love you know. I feel nature is like a, a place that you re, re you, you have energy back. So uh, Does, uh, it was a nice, nice time to be there. During the season for soccer, help with the muscles you need for the long hikes. Does, does the training you do Sorry? like for soccer during the season, does that help with, with the legs and the stamina during some long hikes? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, I love being active. So regardless of that, uh, I just like, you know, being an active person, what, what, regardless of football or, or not. To, to stay in shape and stay active. Well, I like, I love tennis. Uh, I yeah, started yeah, playing I, pickleball I with a lot of friends. Uh, was, I think players. he said he was beating up on you on the pickleball court. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he was lying or, but, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, pickleball, we got into paddle as well. It was nice. I like kayaking, you know, in, in St. Pete, we got we got nice places to go kayaking. And yeah, I like what to is, do other so stuff what, as which well. Which one is paddle? Because I know there's there's like uh, squash and the ones and racquetball that you hit off the wall. How is paddle different from those? What are the, what are the sort of like rules in, in that one? Yeah, I think paddle, it, it just, it's been exploding now back home in Panama and, and in Europe also. It's this one is like pickable, but you have walls around around it, like a glass wall, and the ball can bounce, and you can hit it off the ball, off the wall to the other side. And I mean, it's I think it's more intense than pickable, but uh, it's nice. Just we don't have a lot of uh, courts here in in the U.S. Yeah. right now, but I, I think I this sport is growing. For sure, I, I think I've seen clips of like paddle in Europe too as well. I feel like it's probably it's probably big over there as well. Um, so Juan, I was saying before you got on here, we never right when you got here, you know, you got right into the thick of things. We never had really a chance to get the backstory of Juan Tejada. Who is Juan Tejada off the field? So I kind of just wanted to give you a chance to, uh, Juan Tejada the person, not the player. Who is he? Just, you know, a regular guy. I think uh, I'm very calm. Uh, I like being social with the people I really know. Uh, other than that, uh, I don't know. I just, like I said, Competitive. I like playing football. I love football. Uh, that's probably my whole life. Uh, we were talking, you know, about other sports, but mainly football is the only thing that keeps me going. Uh, in terms of like, I love waking up, going training, and, and you know, playing games. That's that's what really keeps me going. And uh, other than that, uh, you know, um, like I said, just regular person outside the field. Like reading. I like hiking. Like I said like playing other sports when did, and when did that yeah, love for soccer it. sort of start for you since i was young i think my mom told me that i will be very hyperactive at home and they were trying to find a sport to you know to to release that energy outside of of home and i remember i went in taekwondo and and baseball as well i played when i was very young but ultimately, soccer was the one I really loved since I was probably four, four years. And then since then, I just kept playing and playing and, and you know, worked hard and yeah. ended up being now, a right? professional um, footballer. So you grew up in Panama, yeah. So it kind of gives some, a lot of us, you know, grew up in the States and have stayed here. But you've experienced two different cultures. So what was it like growing up in Panama? Yeah, I like it a lot. It's, it's a nice place to be. Um, very hot, very humid. We don't have the stations. Is if anyone know, we we only have rainy season and you know dry season, and it's both are very hot for like 90 degrees around 85, probably the the coldest. But um, it's uh, I like it. Uh, you know, um, we're a very very diverse city. I would say I grew up in the city. That's the capital, Panama City, and you know I I'm still friends with most of my you know, people that I went to middle school, high school, and yeah, Panama is nice. If you have a chance, go visit I'll get there it. one day. I You'll promise. love it. Uh, you moved when you were 15, yeah. started playing for IMG Academy. What was that process like? What went into that decision to, to come to the States and start playing here? Yeah, I think uh, I reached, I was in this club in, in Panama called Chepo FC, and I think at that time, the league in Panama was not, was not very well developed and I think the channels to you know to grow as a football player weren't there so my parents were very supportive and and you know, helped me make the transition to the US just because um, through friends and family we knew about you know the programs here uh, you can study you can play football as well uh, soccer sorry and uh, I think that was what I was striving for trying to get a scholarship here and, and get a degree as well and you know i think img was a great place to be for me uh, i learned a lot about being a professional footballer even though i was very young i learned a lot about nutrition about you know the the training outside the field you know a, a lot of the athletes that you need to do resting nutrition and then you, you go to college played at eckerd for four years started every game all four years and, and went to school as well what was it like playing there amazing uh, i think Eckerd College at St. Pete is such a nice place to be. 
it, it really rem reminded me of Panama when I, when I went visit just before deciding what college to be. And I like uh, hot weather. So that's why I, I picked there and I had a great time, great people, enjoy the football. We were in the best team. It's a very competitive conference, but I think that really helped me a lot to, you know, push, push through and like work even harder to beat those teams that, you know, were. Oh, you're were kidding. <laughs> Sorry, it's a, hey. my, my cat, my cat What's was barking. <laughs> okay, nice. Huh? Oliver. Uh, so, so after Eckert, I, I know you stayed around the area. Um, this is actually, I, I just didn't realize this, going to be your, what, sixth, seventh season in USL because it was the PDL before, which is now USL League 2. You spent two years there starting in 2017. So now we're, we're six, seven years on. You're, so I know you're a young guy, but you're, you're kind of a veteran now. So um, you, you spent a lot of your time in Tampa, three and a half years with the Rowdies. What kind of sticks out? What do you remember from those years playing with them? Tampa, I think. The group of players was very special and um, the values the organization had um, that taught me a lot about being a professional footballer and I really enjoyed my years there. It was a very good winning mentality. We we got to play conference finals and and, and stuff. So uh, learned a lot through those years and I remind, remind, remind those times very, very, very fondly. It, I, I had a very, a lot of fun and Hopefully, you know, I want to repeat that here. I want to get to a conference final, win it, and enjoy it with the people here that are amazing, really. Um, I was not very aware of, you know, the kind of like the fans. Yeah. Just because of COVID and stuff like that, I only came here in 2019, and we played at the Colts Stadium. And, and, you know, it was only one time. I was not able to come the next years, and... Just when I got here and I could see, you know, the mic and and the bib, yep. it was just amazing. I know a lot of BYB. Indy fans probably won't care too much about the Rowdies, but they do care about one player that's coming from there, your old teammate, Sebastian Gwenzotti. What was your time like with him? What are some of your favorite things about his game? Top player, top player. I mean, look forward to play with him again, and he's going to bring a lot to his organization. So it's looking forward to it. I, I mean, he's he's hungry. He's hungry as a lot of the players that we now have are. So it's going to be a great season. We have to work hard for it and, you know, and, get, get what uh, we you deserve. Know, to, to write on top of that script, you start the season away at Tampa Bay at Al Lang Stadium, going back uh, and playing at Al Lang for the first time since you've been an indie player. What are you kind of expecting from that one? Yeah, it's, it's going to be special, you know, going back to what I, it was my home for, for three, four years. Um, and, you know, I'll play the best I can, like I always do. I think at the end of the day, it's going to be three other points that you're fighting for, even though it's kind of like a special environment and playing against people I know and, and playing in front of that stadium. But, yeah, looking forward to it. We're, we're preparing for, for a good season. So. When, when you're sitting looking at home at the office, or sitting where, wherever you were, uh, at various times through this offseason, and you start to see the signings come in and the names and the caliber of players. I guess what thoughts are sort of going through your head? Uh, the women in business this year. I mean, the, the players that came here, not only the quality, just I know the, the mentality that I think is so important as well. So, like I said, looking players, forward, can't wait to guys, start. The other ones that are, that are new that are coming in? Well, I, there's a lot of players, but um, I got a chance to go with Cam okay. uh, to his agility. So it was a great time. And I mean, he's a great player, great person as well. So looking forward there, to, there, to get going to, officially. Are there any of those guys that obviously you played against some of them before, but are there any guys you're like, okay, I'm, I'm happy I don't have to play against him anymore? Yeah, well, Yunus from Hartford played against Yannick as well. Great players. Uh, I'm trying to think just because yeah. a lot of players came from the West and so didn't didn't really play against them. Uh, I mean, there yeah, are a lot of players. Sure. So. Um, so I guess with all that in mind, what should Indy 11 fans expect from the team this year? 
just a hungry team, very offensive, very structured and you know organized in the bag as well. But we want to be exciting team, score a lot of goals and you know win. Win that's that's the important um, thing. Going here. back to you a little bit, so you you do have a cap with the national team uh, with Panama. It's pretty cool how the paths just cross and things happen. It came against the United States uh, back in, in in 2020 in November. What do you remember from that game, and how cool was that for you to to represent your country at the highest level? Uh, that's that's what I think every football player strives for, just to represent their nation. And for me, that's that's a moment I will never forget. We went to Austria and. Yeah, we got to play U.S. We got, I think we got battered. We got 6-2. Um, I mean, we got three goals scored against probably the last 10 minutes. It was 3-2 most of the game. But um, it was a great time. Uh, learned a lot from uh, players that I saw going to the World Cup 2018. Uh, legends. And uh, just created, you know, kind of like connections that, you know, they're still there. So, and I'll never forget just... It was great time, just sometimes just uh, nostalgic about those times, but, you know, working hard to, to trying to get a chance again, yeah, that's, that's, what I was that's gonna important ask as well. Where on your priority list, I guess, like how much do you want to get back to the national team play for them again? I mean, that's probably the top for a football player, uh, but that depends a lot on me and, and doing well. And if I do well and I help, in the 11 that also helps me to get you know visibility and and get a chance again so hopefully yeah uh, we Jesus can do it is in the comment section he wants to know what are your goals for the 2023 season win it win the whole usl get to a final and that's my goal that's the that's the main goal for us i think yeah not and bad. for me uh, I want to ask you a couple questions uh, that were sent in by, by some of our fans. Uh, the first one is, what is your favorite thing about Indiana? Favorite thing about Indiana? I think uh, you're going to laugh, but the cold, I've never experienced it. And uh, I think it's nice to see uh, the snow. I've never never been really around it, so... Uh, Every every day that I see snow in the ground, I'm so excited. I'm, I tell my wife, "You know, look, it's, it's like white." And uh, I think <laughs> I don't know how long it's gonna be like that, but for now, it's uh, it's well, yeah, you know, yeah, buckle for, up for because excited. tomorrow something's coming. So hey, if you're heading to a sledding hill or something, let me know. I'll tag along with. You. <laughs> uh, I'm from Michigan, so I know all about the snow. I uh, I, I, I want to. Yeah. That kind of uh, there was another heard, one yeah, that yeah. kind of uh, goes with that too. Is Coming from Florida and coming from Panama, does the cold bother you when you're playing, when you're playing games? Well, you don't really think about it. Like, um, if you have your mentality right, and, you know, that's, that's just an external factor. Uh, and it affects everybody that is on the field. So you try not to think too much about it. You get running, you get into the game, and... You know, it starts, you know, it starts going away. So, yeah, you try not to affect. I mean, it gets cold. Your lungs start hurting sometimes, but, you know, you try yeah, to not sure. think too much. Uh, someone asked, I want to ask you before I forget, they asked, what was your favorite thing uh, about playing for Coach Lowry? Just his passion and his knowledge of the game. Um, I mean, you all could see it in, in the mic as well every time you want a game and, I mean, that's that's what he transmits to the players as well. So I think a lot of the players that we are now here for this year have that kind of passion as well. And we all want to, to win. We want to get better. We want to be exciting in front of the fans. One of my favorite goals. things about that stretch where we won, we beat uh, Louisville and, and San Antonio in four days is when, when Mark went over to the fans, the BYB after each game and just gave – bunch of fist pumps he was screaming at the top of his lungs those are some of the coolest video shots uh that i had all year um a simple one for you messi or ronaldo quick messi no uh, is not that, even is a that question the central for me. american like south american like bias a little bit or no 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 i have a lot of friends that prefer ronaldo but uh since I was a young kid, uh, Messi, and I'm, I think now there's no debate. I'm with you. I'm the same because boat. of the World Cup. Uh, so. Shelby wanted me to ask you about. Yeah. So this is 
this is something I know about, but not a lot of people probably do. Um, tell us about the high school performances you did. <laughs> uh, Shelby, well, uh, in Panama, we, we have this kind of like dance competition called Comparsas, and it's like um, you compete probably like high school grades, so you have what, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and probably towards the end of the year, you practice for two months, one month and a half maybe, and then at the end there's like, you know, 50 people in a stadium dancing together, and I mean, at the end there's like judges and soft professional dancers that um, kind of like say who's the winner or not, and I mean, it's it's a good experience to, you know, bond with the, with the classmates and stuff, and I think everybody does it. It's not only like, you know, girls do it and stuff like that. People are, people are, are invited to do it and, and you feel like you're not part of, of the group if you don't, right. you don't uh, take These, take by the part. way, if you look these up on YouTube, these are crazy big productions, lights, everything, chore choreographed, dances, it's amazing. So <laughs> go check it out. I'm trying to see if you can find the one that wants it. Um, what is your favorite pregame music or artist? Who do you listen to before game? Pre music, I like. Um, I have a diverse, but um, I think for me, I really like Coldplay and I like Viva la Vida. Is that, That's is that probably your my favorite one. Pump up song that gets you going. Nice. I think Good. that'll be. Yeah. Uh, what are you yeah. looking most forward to being back with Sebastian Guenzadi as a strike partner? Like I said, top player and just his mentality as well. So he's going to help us a lot in the field and looking forward outside as well. I know him very well and he's uh, he speaks Spanish. He's the native language. So looking right. forward to speaking, in, you know, <laughs> right. just being around a lot. Uh, this one I had to translate. I did my best. So sorry if it's a little bit wrong. This one came in in Spanish. Um, how has your life changed here in Indy? I think since you've moved here. No, I got, Will you read I it in Spanish? Spanish so I, no? can't, I can't look at it. Well, here, let me try it. Let me try it. Let me try so it. You, you said, how's my life all right. changed? All right. <laughs> Don't judge me here. <laughs> ¿Cómo ha cambiado tu vida de vivir en tu país de origen aquí en Indy? Was that all right? <laughs> That's very good. That's decent. Do you go, no, I, like, I you take years, Spanish in high school? I did school and stuff like here and there the past year or so. So I'm trying. I just, I just want to eavesdrop on the conversations you guys have at training. That's, that's my only motivation. <laughs> that's good, Ian. That's, that's very good. So you said how, how my life has changed from, you know, Panama moving here to, yeah. Yeah. to U.S., to Indy, kind of. Um, well, I'm, I'm away from my family. That's probably one of the biggest ones that hurt me a little bit. But um, I have constant communication with them. So... Looking forward for them to come here to Indy and, and visit me. I think that's one. I mean, the cold, like I said, and and just probably English language. That's that's a basic one, but uh, just yeah, those those will be three are, three are of the main ones. I think. Am I gonna meet you halfway for the season opener and, and come to the game in Tampa? Hopefully, hopefully. I mean, they'll live in Panama. They were they were trying to, but I think they'll prefer just to come here and visit Indy. They haven't been up north here, and and I mean the the place where Carmel is very nice, Indianapolis as well. So I, they want to visit here as well. So yeah, they, it'll they'll be nice come. When they'll come. Spend time with you after the game and stuff. And said, you know, just go to the game and then going back on yeah. the way. So that that'll be good. Uh, so everyone else, send in questions if you want. But I got I got a couple more. Uh, for you on just kind of based on uh, soccer. So do you have a Premier League team that you support? Premier League? <sighs> that's that's okay. a good question. I'm a big La Liga fan. But um, Barcelona, uh, always been. That's, that's my main club that I follow all the time. From the Premier League, I mean, I like to watch City a lot. Um, but I'm a bit romantic in the sense of like, I like the underdogs. So I'm like rooting so hard for Arsenal this year. Yeah. I want them to win the, the Premier League. And they've been playing very well. Uh, Brighton as well, they've been playing good football. So I like watching teams that, that 
play good football regardless of if I support them or not. But yeah, not a I want Arsenal to win this year. Uh, that kind of leads into the next one: is who's your favorite all-time manager? All-time manager that I like well that I've seen. I think Pep Guardiola. Just those years, <laughs> I was. Yeah, I watched the best football that's ever been played, I believe so. And uh, I think him in that time, just with Messi, Xavi, Iniesta, and all those players were... Have you watched... What's uh, the best football I've seen? Uh, take the ball, pass the ball on Netflix? Fantastic. I, I have. It's very good. It's amazing. Uh, it's amazing. Who are your top three forwards of all time? Top three forwards that I can think of. Um, for me... Well, I don't know if you count Messi as a forward, but I like Kun Aguero a lot. Uh, Thierry Henry, I like him a lot too. And I used to follow Thierry Henry, Kun Aguero. And I like Diego Forlan as well for Uruguay. And just, well, there's two, you know, two South Americans just because they're Latinos. And I, I mean, I used to love Kun Aguero because um, I felt he was, you know, like me, like short stature and, he was just a monster, and uh, that's that's probably my main player that I really follow as a forward. Diego Forlan is no, one I that I kind of fell in love with in, t in 2010 during the World Cup. I've never uh, – it's hard to yeah. enjoy watching a player more than him in those games specifically. He kind of just grabbed him by the scruff and, and made him his own. He's, 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 he's a good one as well. If you could – and that kind of yeah. – sort of similar. Uh, and this is the last one for me. If you could swap jerseys with anybody – doesn't matter if they're famous or not. Who would it be? So jerseys yeah. like, you mean football, like playing? Uh, I think Aaron and Lewis Hilton from uh, from the Rarities. Those I, you know, we have a very good relationship with them, and they were also my yeah. you say yep. grooms groomsman I don't know. Yeah, that's how you say. It. Yeah, they were they were part of my wedding as well. It's because they're such a great people and and had a lot of fun with them and I'll change shirts with them. So okay. I need to. Nice. Well, hey, It'll be get two. A chance, uh, in March. You'll have to talk to our new kit man, Peyton. He might have uh, some thoughts on that as well. Um, but but we'll, we'll see what we can do. Uh, <laughs> someone asked in the comments, do you have any advice or tips for young forwards, attackers going through their academy right now? Young forwards, attackers, just... You know, as a forward, I think you, you just need to keep trying in the sense like sometimes you'll be thinking too much about a chance that you've, you missed. And that's probably the worst thing just in a game. You'll get chances if you work for it. But if you start thinking too much about the one you missed, you might not get any other one just because you, you're in your head. You probably are going to be, you know, um, hiding yourself. So just keep going, man, because... Like I said, it's there's gonna be more chances and work on it. Work if if you if you don't feel as confident enough, just practice, practice, practice. That's that's yeah, that's good crucial. advice. Crucial. Anything else you want to say? You want to get out there into the world before we uh, sign off for the week? Um, to the world? <laughs> I don't know. That's so <laughs> big, heavy. Uh, visit Panama. I'll okay. I'll be. <laughs> Sponsoring <laughs> Perfect. Country. Good one. <laughs> All right, Juan. So, hey, preseason starts next week. So, I, I'm sure we'll be seeing pictures and videos of you. So, everyone stays tuned to our socials uh, as we get going and, and get back into preseason. The season is not too far away. Uh, we'll be back with 11 Live next week, next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Tune in then. Thanks for watching. Thank you.